Yo, yo, yo. We back again. And see, this is my main man. He drive all the way in over an hour ride to come get this special haircut. This is what we do. Yeah, man, man, coming from another state. The from He from the other boot, Louisiana. Yeah, man. So he gonna just go with a taper. But before we start, he's a great photographer. Tell them where they can find you, call you. At Studio Steel on Instagram. At Studio Steel on Instagram. S-T-U-D-I-O-S-T-E-E-L-E. -E -E. Tell them one more time, AC kicked up. At S-T-U-D-I-O-S-T-E-E-L-E. -E -E. I had to think about how to spell studio. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, 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 he was like, oh, you can find me at, uh, uh, ST, uh, just find me. <laughs> I'm on there. <laughs> hey, I ain't gonna lie, bro. It's the littlest word that they're trying to trip you up. And, and I'm gonna tell you another thing that, uh, that gets you when you're trying to spell something. It's when you know you got to spell something to the public. Yeah. You want to make sure you get it right. Yeah. And that jam you up too, man. Uh, it's, it's, it's been a long time since I had a spelling test. Yeah. Uh, it messes you up. <laughs> Just to think about being right. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Knowing I know how to spell studio. Yeah. See, I kept them blinds closed. I was wondering... Because that phone be coming in and out sometimes, you know what I'm saying? Like it's picking up different uh, lightings, and mm -hmm. you know if you get closer, you know the zoom. So my partner was telling me yesterday, just hold your finger on the phone. Yeah, that don't work. No, no, no. That don't work for me on this one. All right, so what he getting the taper, and you know he's gotten a little older now too. You know he's a couple years behind me, but uh, he wants to distinct taper because we now go lower with his top. You know, he's trying to cut out some of his grades instead of just accepting them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, bruh? We are here now. I might see my temple grade up too. I'm only 28. Sound like my mama. My mama been 29 for 29 years. She just said last week she's 30 now. When she finally crossed over and started to accept that she even got over it. Taking his fade a little higher, he wants it a little higher. Just cut out some of that gray. And like I said, because we go low on this top. You know, he wanna go a little lower on the sides now. Then I came your way two weeks ago. Four. Two Saturdays ago. I went and ate at uh, Davis Rotisserie down there in Covington. Zia's? Yeah. Oh, I ate at Zia's about two weeks ago. On a Saturday? Yeah, when I was there. Uh-huh. This is uh, this is a Tuesday or Thursday. Yeah, that's not bad at all. Was it good? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Our bill was 160 bucks. You had the duck? <coughs> yep, had yeah, the duck. I figured. We ordered two ribeye steaks. And the shrimp and grits mm -hmm. with the uh, andouille sausage in it. I have no sausage in it. We're supposed to come with it. It's supposed mm -hmm. to be in it already. Yeah. And then they gave me the wrong steak. They gave me his steak. And I ain't like the way my partner's steak. He got well done. I got medium well. And man, I'm looking at his steak like, man, your steak was way better than mine. <laughs> right. And I'm finding out he eating my steak over there. He like, Hey, bro, I think uh, they gave us the wrong steak. Now you done introduced him to a new, uh, <laughs> yeah. a new way of eating. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to take all that food back out of here. Hey, I'm not going to eat it, but you ain't either. You ain't going to enjoy my steak. Yeah, they duck is good, man. That's yeah. what, I, what mm -hmm. I had. Really good. You got me thinking about going back again. Yeah. I told my dad, then I went over there. He like, you drove that far for food? For food? I said, yeah. He said, man, I would never drive that for me. <laughs> I said, I used to do it all the time. They used to have a ZSN smile. 
Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, I, I could tell from the way cause we kept getting confused on how to get there. Mm -hmm. They was giving us two spots. You know, we were using two different GPSs, and man, we went all over that little road down there, up and down that road twice yeah. before we found. I'm like, man, I think we gotta go back the other way. I was trying to get over here to eat at uh, the Fields or something like that in Biloxi. You ever heard of that? Yeah, I heard of it. Ain't it good? You heard? Uh, I think my partner ate there. Him and his wife. They was telling me. I think I'm not. I'm not sure, but uh, he said it was good. Yeah, it looked good. Fields in Biloxi just got that free advertising. <laughs> <laughs> you owe me. <laughs> So he has some low spots in the front of his head too that I'm trying to cut around while going lower with his hair. So, you know, like I told you, majority of my customers now we're at this age and I have to do a whole lot of cutting around that type of stuff to keep it looking the same length. You've been keeping up with the Olympics, huh? This is my first time watching them yesterday. Oh, really? Yeah, I was. They, I kept, people kept telling me well, these don't really matter right here, so I really wasn't paying that much attention to it. And I'm like, people got gold medals and they back home, not yeah, running yeah. no more. I'm like, what do you mean don't matter? I seen Noah Lyles on uh, Fox News yesterday. No, they started. Simone Biles got a few goals. Yeah, I, I knew that they that side had oh, started because they they been flipping for two weeks. Yeah. I don't think track and field started yet. Uh, basketball started. Yeah. Well, they said basketball was doing the preliminary. I think, so they, I think they had it now. Okay. They better not lose. And not with that team. And, right. uh, and B did switch his uh, citizenship to America. He want that medal. Yeah. We want that gold medal. Plus, this is where your life is. This is where you're making your money. Well, they said he went to high school in uh, America, though. Oh, did he? Uh, that's what they said. That's what I was reading. And, you know, I was looking at a Canada team yesterday. All of their guys are NBA players. Mm. All of them. I was like, oh, my goodness. America's doing this? Uh, Schroeder. Uh, he played yeah, for Germany. Germany. Yeah. Uh, that's all about uh, Bimmy, whatever his name is, Spurs, he has a lot of friends. But see, that's where them guys from. Mm -hmm. But, you know, bringing all those people in here, you making it harder on yourself playing in the Olympics. You playing against other NBA yeah. stars. Right. Murray is a star. That boy uh, from OKC, Alex Alexander, what's his name? What they call him? He got like three alphabets. That boy great, man. That boy's a great basketball player. For OKC, the star. He was uh he used to be with the Clippers, I believe, and they traded him. So I know they gotta play against Andre Tapunko. Where he from? Greece? Yeah. Mm -hmm. France. Oh, they call him the Greek freak. Yeah, he's from he's Greece. Uh -huh, he's from Greece. Okay. By way of Africa. Yeah. Everybody by way of that. Yeah, which is true. But just to have him, I think he was born in that. Yeah. Honestly, I ain't gonna lie. It's, it don't even fit them guys when I see them to start speaking for them. You know? A seven foot black man playing in the NBA, playing the way that they play, it just don't, it don't fit them when they open their mouth. And it's true, yeah. <laughs> like that dude played for the Lakers, <laughs> Japanese and... I saw him on the Japanese team, the Chinese team, one of them. What's his name? I forget him too. You know, I mean, but just, just coming from uh, France, it, you know, it, it was weird to see black people speaking French over there. And yeah. English, yeah, English is their second language. And you've been back from France for about what? About a months? month now. About a month. Mm -hmm. English, is, English is their second language. English is their second language. Like most of the world. Yeah. Uh, everybody speaks English. 
You know, you, you go over there and, and they start speaking to you in French and you say, you know, English, and then they'll just cross over. Uh -huh. Speaking just like they from Paso or something. You know, most countries speak a bilingual. And a lot of Africans, them guys speak four or five different languages. Correct. And I was wondering, like, I don't know if it's because their country is just a bit gumbo like that where you know so many other people in or are they learning this in school or what they doing because it seems like everybody that i meet from africa is very bilingual and they're very good at it i i, I first of all i think that they're very smart and and i think that that when you look to migrate or, or move to a uh, another place then you just probably prepare yourself to learn different languages yeah, because you don't know where you you gonna end up. You know, you can be in Yeah, France, see, or, American you know, already know that. Yeah, we American. We ain't trying to go nowhere. <laughs> right, right. And those guys are always looking to get to another country or get somewhere better. So they already start studying to be able to Correct. speak it by the time they get here. You know, and when, and when I was over there, you would see you would see little children that were bilingual, whatever language they were speaking, and then they would cross over to English. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I wonder, they got to be getting taught to do this. They, they learn it very young. And I would love for my kid to get in the Spanish and everything else at a young age. Don't teach them. It definitely seems like the American school system don't teach us the things that we need to function in everyday life. They don't teach us about finance. <laughs> really, you don't. You don't teach a person how to uh, buy a house what they need, two years tax return. You don't tell them the obvious, you know what I'm saying? You just put them out there. You know, you got them for 12 years and you're teaching them a bunch of the same stuff. Right. Ain't nobody gonna ever use no calculus unless, it, even out, outside of college, say you a scholar at the great at Yale. If you don't go into uh, 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 engineering. Uh, engineering and trying to send a rocket to the moon, you ain't gonna never need calculus and all this other type of stuff. You know what I'm saying? The, You're right. the educational system definitely has to be uh, restructured. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Uh, I think it's uh, old fashioned. Yeah. Uh, I also don't believe children have to be in school for eight hours. Yeah, that's yeah. really all they doing is teaching you how to work for somebody. For eight eight hours. hours in school. Your parents, they got you longer than your parents have you. Mm -hmm. they, uh, they, instead of them educating you, they're indoctrinating you, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. To believe, and, you know? Absolutely. It's just same stuff that Fidel Castro did to the students over there. So when you grow up, when you grow up and, and get your job, get your, your, your big boy you, and your big girl you job. Program to you sit down, you, shut you up, listen. Program. Go to school. Yes. Yeah, you, you're programmed to sit there for eight, nine hours, have a lunch, and go right back to work. You, yeah, it's definitely programmed. Yep, yep, Kids yep. shouldn't be in school no more than four to five hours. Because what else are you doing down there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, really, you can put a kid in school at eight o'clock, mm -hmm. and by lunchtime, he can be at his house eating. Mm -hmm. 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock in your last class. You can grab a snack on your way out. Yeah. <laughs> we don't need recess. We don't need PE. We don't need music class. Right. And I'm. And I think the way that school is structured is unfair to the student athlete as well. Because the student athlete, he's coming in, he's doing so much more than you. This man got to go work out. <laughs> he's trying to stay on the field. He's trying to stay on the court. And depending on his production on the field and the court, he gets kicked out of school. Well, we're going to cut your scholarship. I mean, what? I mean, this guy is struggling. Man, and, and then, you know, most athletes. You know, the, the school part wasn't really the big thing. They was focused on grinding on the field because that's the way the coaches wanted them and the teachers wanted them in high school. Keep on running this ball. Keep throwing this ball. Passing. Give them a little passing grade. Once he get to college, he's expecting the same thing. And if they don't do that for him, now he's kicked out of school. And you didn't got the best out this this young kid. Uh, absolutely. But, um... I mean, here's the secret. College is going to pass you anyway. If, you, if you're trying to get any bachelor's degree, they, they're going to they're scoot you along. That's why you have so many people graduating from college. Not to say that they, they don't deserve their degree, but college is not in the business of, of failing children because they are. You know, they need the, the bodies in there to uh, continue their business. So, they, you know, you, know you, 
the school right down down, down the road down there, uh, Mississippi Gulf Coast Community College. You know, that, you know, that's one of the easiest schools I've been to. Mm -hmm. Personal experience, they're going to pass you along. They're going to find ways to pass you. Well, what do you think about the student athlete? No, how does it affect them? You know, because they, I mean, you was an athlete. You, you know what's going on, man. It's, it's tougher on yeah. a student athlete. Absolutely. They definitely have a job. They have a job that they, not, they, they wasn't getting job. paid for. And I can tell you this right now. Education is secondary when you are a student athlete. Exactly my point. You are expected to perform. And your college education is attached to your performance on the field or the court. That's exactly what I was just talking about. Yeah, you have to produce. I mean, they cutting kids. So if it was about college, you know, getting education, why are you cutting the kid off the team? That's why I was all for athletes getting paid. Oh, getting I college. definitely was. I yeah. definitely was. You know, I got a lot of friends, even relatives that play pro football. They went to major universities, you know, Auburn, LSU, Mississippi State, you know, uh, Tennessee. I mean, I remember one guy, he had no money. And when I was in college, I, was, I went to community college, you know, I used to be with a lot of the football players. And I remember one time, the guy didn't have $10 to get him something to eat. So he got in the car with his coach and asked for $10. The coach told him he couldn't get it to him. Yeah. You couldn't get it, man, $10 with us against NCAA rules. Man, come on here, man. Stop with that stuff. Who's going to turn you in over buying your student a combo, man? Stop. Just stop it with that trash, bruh. And then, these are all rules that was made up by some man. God didn't put these rules into effect. Okay, <laughs> I wrote the rule that we just created. Now we're gonna create another rule for the rule that we just broke. Now, now let's come up with something else, you know. And the deal is this: where they can find out how to make money off of whatever they're trying to do, they're gonna do it. Mm -hmm. Just like with the weed stuff, you know, weed so illegal, lock people up, take them from their family for forty years mm -hmm. over weed. We shouldn't be no illegal than alcohol. No more. And that's what I'm gonna say: alcohol killing way more people than weed. And I'm not a weed smoker. And I don't even drink alcohol. I don't do no type of drugs, weed or alcohol. But let's get real here. Let's stop with this trash, man. If you found a way to, I mean, bootlegging back in the day, that was your drug back then. That was your cocaine and your fentanyl. Man, they was locking people up left and right. Why do you think uh, Al Capone was making so much money off of it? Because it was so illegal. <laughs> Now, once you legalize it, well, you know, it minimizes the amount of money a person can make. Well, they found a way to put a tax on it. That's all it was. People finally accepted it, and that's what's going on with weed. Yeah, weed is going to be legal in every state of the union. It just it's, took them long, long yeah, enough to figure out how to yeah. control it and how to tax it. But really, it took them long enough to make people that think they're goody two-shoes accept it. That's what happened. Now they got our politicians to accept it. So it's like, oh, oh yeah, we, yeah, we're going to make an excuse for why we can do this now. You know what I'm saying? Well, the state of Mississippi still haven't accepted it. Yeah, they have, too. Well, if you do go get the, the medical marijuana card, then you lose your right to carry a firearm and, and things like that. So they have revisions on it. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, it's, you know, you got to give up you got to give up a little something to get a little something. Yeah, well, that'll be, they won't have to worry about that in about a year or two. They, all that's going to go. And the truth is this. If you legalize weed, everybody's locked up in jail, you got to release them. Of course, right. But they're not releasing them. Why? Because jail is big business. Follow the dollar and you find out all the problems. That's what we are about. We're about making money. Capitalism. That's fact. At your expense, and it does not matter. Capitalism is, is one of the biggest problems in this country right now, man. It, it's gotten too far out of hand. It's just like our military in the war. You know, back in the day, at least when I was growing up, I would think that we were fighting for something. Mm -hmm. Now, I have friends that went to uh, Vietnam. My dad is a Vietnam era vet. He was in the military as well. And during the Vietnam War. And uh, I have friends that was there on the ground. Got shot in the leg. 
And uh, he told me, man, they was on the fire one day. He said, man, them bullets was raining down on us. He said, we calling for backup. He said, then we look up, we see our airplane flying in. <laughs> <laughs> this is a true story. That's what this mm -hmm. man told me. He said, bro, like, yeah. He said, we jumped up, started cheering. Yeah, we better blow them up. Get us up out of here. He said, and they uh, 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 parachuted packs, big blocks on a crate, mm -hmm. dropped parachutes. To the Viet Cons. Mm. He said all of us started crying in the middle of the field. Weren't expecting that. He said they were dropping them off guns. Now this is what he said. He was out there. I don't know. Mm. He said they were dropping off guns to keep the war going. I can believe that. He said that's what happened. He said I'm telling you what I seen with my own eyes. We were getting. They were dropping off guns on the, to the enemy line. And then what they come tell me and you is a total different story on the news. We don't know what's going on. And see, that's why I say, man, people, these politicians these days just got us out here. It's hard to send your kid to the military, man, to say, yeah, serve your country. And they up there smoking dope, getting high, having sex with each other and sending your kid to die. Yeah, it's the truth. <laughs> hey, it's the truth. That's that's we ain't got it. We stop sugarcoating this stuff. This is true. Ain't nobody. Uh, 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 what's his name? Ain't sending his uh, son out there that's on the dope to go get shot. But he'll send your son to go get shot. I ain't with it because if if they was trying to fight wars, right? Fight the war to win. Why are we over here letting our soldiers get killed like this? Fight a war to win. You know, they're not fighting to win, man. They're fighting for money and political stuff and what sounds good to the dumb voter. And, you know, man, the voter ain't never, those people that you kowtowing to ain't never been in combat. They ain't never been faced with nothing real. But everybody want to tell you how to do something. And you ain't never did nothing yourself. See, I'm just a strong believer in what's real, man. Let's, let's stop all this stuff, man. Sending people, kids to die. Yeah. Yeah. I don't mind. I don't mind going to war right now if it's for something that's real. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, a lot of things ain't real, man. Yeah. <laughs> it ain't even real. <laughs> we, you, you mean we don't even know why we over here? Everybody that I talked to in the Vietnam War said they still don't know why they was in war. Uh, same, same, <laughs> same with the Iraq War, you know. Yeah, I, I mean, they only knew why they was there, and they pumped it up so, so good, man. I, I was ready to go sign now, up. Now, I ain't gonna lie, though. The difference between that Iraq War was we did get bummed by, so, by Afghanistan, but but somebody bummed us. We don't know. <laughs> yeah, but we, what happened? If we ain't nothing happened with us with the Viet Cong. We, we absolutely know who bombed us because he came out and said that he bombed us. Yeah, so we, we went after who we said bombed we, us. We, then we we went after Iraq, not Afghanistan. Also, because we knew that we were losing war probably in Iraq. If, I mean, in Afghanistan, you know, we wasn't ready to to go over there and fight them on their turf in them hills and and. And that desert and, and them valleys. So we went over there and, and bombed Iraq. <laughs> you know? But but even that, somebody did attack us first. Somebody did, like, you know, the Pearl Harbor thing. They, a lot of people in history said America wanted to get into the war. They needed a reason. Mm. So while they were having peace talks, Japan bombed us. And they trying to say that that was a setup between Japan and America so that we can enter World War II. So my thing is this, and it probably they probably did. Who knows? But my thing is this: something still happened. Boom! Still fell on us. Okay, thank you for letting us come into this war that we wanted to get in. Now that you didn't bum us, but the Viet Cons. I mean, maybe I don't know the story good enough, but uh, I don't know nothing about them doing nothing. Yeah, I agree with that statement that you just said. <laughs> Even though they were a communist country. But you can be a communist country if, if that's your country. If, if that's how y'all want to run it. Yeah, why my, why my kid need to die for what y'all got going on right. over here? Y'all will self-implode. Let God take care of it. I'm telling you right now, where there's wrong yet, God will deal with it. We don't need to go die for what y'all over there doing. It just, I don't get it. 
man, let them blow each other up. And we'll come over there and uh, revitalize the country. And now that's part of America now. You know? That's what I'm saying. And you know, America, we've always been the police of the nation. And that's, and that's okay. You know? But when it comes down to us starting to die in the... Vietnam War went on for what twenty years? How long did that war go? Is it is it okay when they don't want us over there? Yeah, I guess here's what you gotta look at. Here's the problem that we're Americans in a pickle because we are the world's police. If you are harming your own people, yeah, we gotta go do something to stop that, and prevent that. Because you know you you over here killing your own women and kids and men. If that's what's going on, then yeah. But most of the time, these wars are just about money. Oil or this or that, control. you know what I mean? Control, yeah. yeah. You didn't give us what we wanted when we, and because you, the the politician ain't the one literally laying on the ground pulling the trigger. So then, therefore, they got to create something so we can say why we finna go over here and do this. Yeah. And half these children don't sign up; they just sign up for a, for a, a school, a Camaro. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. A, a school in my bag. I just had two young Navy guys in here. They've been graduated for two years out of high school. Now, can you imagine your ship getting blown up when the, uh, I forgot the name of that ship that was bombed out there in the, in the, in the water. Uh, oh, man, I know USS that. Cole? Cole, yeah. Mm -hmm. I had customers that was on that ship that made it back alive. Mm -hmm. And guess what they told me? He said while they was out here at the shipyard, at our local shipyard fixing the ship, he said, man, we found a finger. Oh, absolutely. On the boat. Absolutely. Now, that coal was built right here where I'm from. That coal ship that got bombed was built at the same shipyard me and this guy used to work for. Right? Well, when they bombed it, they brought it back here to Pasagula to be repaired. So those the uh, people that were stationed on that ship were still on the ship besides the, what, like eight people that died, something like that? My dad had to patrol that ship uh, right when OSHA cleared it. Brought it in. And he said you could still smell the stench of death on that uh, ship. I don't know if y'all can hear what he said, but his daddy had to patrol that ship because his daddy was part of the security team for the shipyard. He said you could mm -hmm. still smell the stench of dead bodies in that boat because see what they did was they trapped the yeah. bottom half of mm -hmm. the boat off so that the boat don't sink so if you was down there alive you drown mm. it was nothing they, they can't get to you because too much water coming in we can't lose us all trying to find you one they probably tried to get them at first no doubt but once they say okay we can don't seem like we can get to them i mean just think about that man you down there Drowning. Yeah. And for what? Like you said, a Camaro. See, and that's the difference in America military versus uh other country military, other countries military. Those people use their civilians to protect their military. And we use our military to protect our civilians. But you know, at the same time, our civilians most of them not joining the military to protect this country. Most of them are joining for education, to get to get out of their situation, uh, to get free money. You know, military, our military have incentivized our citizens yeah. to do to take these little programs, <laughs> so to get mm -hmm. it all for the word education. Sign on bonuses. S sign on bonuses. Yeah, mm -hmm. man. But nobody is pushing. You do know if a war break out. You ain't signing up for education, but that's how they're going to package this thing. And, and the problem is, is once these young people, these brave people go over there and fight and defend us and defend our freedom, then when they come back, they can't get disability. They can't get into the VA in a timely manner. Yeah. They're getting denied uh, yep. their claims. Uh, yeah. So you, better you know be Tyrone? Right. Yeah. Tyrone mm -hmm. did three. We got a party did three tours in Iraq and Fallujah as a Marine. Got back here, could not get a job for three years. He's applying for the post office. Mm -hmm. Nobody would hire this man, so he went back to college. So, and he stayed with me. I bought him a vehicle so he can drive back and forth to college. That's a fact. Yeah. Nobody would hire this guy, man. Y'all sending these people, you setting them up. It's kind of like the prison system. 
We need prison reform. We need all of that. Because if you take a man, put him in prison for three, four, five, ten years, and then you let him out, he don't have another skill he didn't develop, and then you're not hiring him, he's going right back to prison. Because he's going to feed himself eventually. He's going to do something to feed himself. So the will to survive. You got to start dropping all those things on your job. Or we don't hire prisoners. Yeah, pick the prisoner that you don't want to hire. Just like you vetting anybody. You gonna vet, you gonna see who you want to hire. Me and Nick. You know. But you got to start creating programs that these guys can come out of jail while they are locked up in jail every day. They need to be in a classroom learning a trade, how to mm -hmm. weld, how to electrical, how to build, how to be a barber, how uh, 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 something to be uh, 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 to fit into society, to be a productive citizen. I would have their tails in class for eight hours. And guess what? When you out of here, you, we, we give you two more hours to hang out, then you going back to your bunk. Get a hold down on all that riffraff stabbing, selling dope in prison. Get a hold down on the rapes in prison, whatever's going on. Because you, you your head is in a book all day. You learning something. You being productive. So when you get out here, you you been in prison for four years. Well, you are a seasoned veteran. When you go to that shipyard as a welder, you've been welding in the prison for four years. You know how to weld. So you should get paid top dollar, $30 an hour. You can take care of yourself and a family with that. So the government needs to start looking into some of this stuff that us regular people are saying. It's a reason that they're not doing it. That's why people can hate on Trump all they want. But Trump tried to do some prison reform. He did things like that. You know what I'm saying? You, you know, hey, you, he, he don't agree with, with Trump. <laughs> but I'm telling you, man, Trump did do common sense things because he's not a politician. He's just a regular guy who got a bunch of money that ran for office. He just tried to do things that make sense. And I agree with that, man. He ain't kowtowing to the to the to the left. I mean, he just man, just give us back our country. Cut out all these games that we play, man. Give us back our country, bro. That's what I'm looking for. Man, stock market, groceries through the roof. Man, I was looking at a video from three years ago. I was talking about. I said on this video when I was showing my a house that I did, I said, you have got to start getting these. I said, these grocery prices are going to go through the roof. And look at what happened. I said, we can't even get no chicken wings on the table. We're in the south. You can't get no chicken wings, no sweet tea, no barbecue ribs. I, I just watched the video I did three years ago. Speaking about the groceries are going to go up. And look at what happened. It's just common sense. What I've seen, I see it. And here's the problem with capitalism. They have they've allowed Walmart to be the only grocery store Ooh, in, say that in a again. lot of neighborhoods, and now they're feeding us uh, old meat, old yeah. vegetables, uh, and we have no other choice but to continue hey, to go to this. I'm gonna say this: old meat. I buy wings. I ain't gonna call the grocery store name. Two days, if you don't eat them wings, yes, they spoil. Absolutely, uh, fruit. I have to I have to take the wings and freeze them. Then for a day, and then let them fall out through the refrigerator to make it last about a week. You see what I'm saying? Because they, 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 they. Man, I took, I've taken two packs back to the grocery store. And guess what they say? Huh? I don't know why these like. Yeah. Yes, you do. Because you either pull it. It's either how you buying your chicken. Some reason this stuff is not lasting, or you're taking your chicken, and you saying, okay, we got from the date, we got another week left on this. So let's throw them all in one pack and call it a family pack. And hurry up and try to buy it for cheap just so we can get our money back out of it. We're not really making any money, but we ain't going to lose none. And you've given us food you know already going to be bad in a week. So it's sitting in your refrigerator for sale for $10 for, for four days. Then I buy it on the fifth day. And now it's no good in my refrigerator on the sixth and the seventh day. Correct. And I'm back in your line with it on the eighth day. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about, hey, this chicken bad. <laughs> Hey, this is a good conversation that we had. I'm going to turn it around and show you all his haircut. So, show you what we did here. I want y'all to see. So, let's tape it. Put your foot down there. Spin around. Nice little taper. That's it. He got his grown, getting his grown man on these days. We don't fool around. You go right there. That's good. Come back. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Look at that, people. Good people. Trying to get why this got a little fog look. I hate that smoke look on this thing. I think it's the 
It might be your lighting. Or lighting. Yes, yeah. the lighting. See, you're a photographer. You've been <laughs> found your your light by now, man. Yeah. I'm trying to find mine. Right. Spin it around one more time. That's why I say I think because I got them back curtains open. It's like that. Alright, and again, y'all know what I say. Another satisfied customer, and guess what? Now I gotta drive got, an hour home. Yeah, <laughs> you gotta drive an hour home. Hey, but you gotta keep watching because I'm kind of fast. I told y'all this a thousand times. But I like this conversation that we had. This is what more people need to have, and not just more people. I'm gonna speak out as a black man. More black men need to step up in the community. See, I'm a barber. I've been pushing what. I believe is right uh, spiritually and speaking to people about uh, growth in themselves to these young guys that don't have nobody to talk to them. I do that and I've been doing it for years and I've been getting attacked for many years, but I don't care because I know what's best for the person that's attacking me. Honestly, because if you say something contrary to what I'm saying, when I'm trying to help a young guy out, <laughs> you just in the way. Go sit down. Get out the way, man. I'm sick of people like that, too. Man, y'all see what I do? Like I said, it's not just a barber show. I try to do it all. You see what I'm saying? See that youngster right there? Jordan? I've been doing that boy since he was a baby. Jordan, what have I been preaching all the years? Self-growth, trying to help people. Trying to help that man point him in the right direction from the time he was born. This is how you buy a house. This is how you create wealth. This is how. If you don't have a, 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 a guy in your community doing that, Jordan, haven't I been te teaching you that since facts? Yeah. And guess what? If he do it, he do it. If he don't, he don't. That's on him. But at least I'm going to do my part. He started out, got it, went to school, got his degree. That was the first step. Now he got his job. He's in, a, he's in the electrical field. He doing, he's doing his thing. And we're going to keep it like that. He got it. As long as he can feed, take care of his family. That makes you successful. Ain't that right, Nick? You're right. All right, man. I'm going to see y'all later.